Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, award-winning media personality, Kelly Sutton. And now, Rich Redman. What's up, rock and rollers? Yep, it's that time. Another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you from Music City, USA. Even in COVID, everyone's coming to Music City, USA. And on this show, I've got my friend, sidekick, co-producer, cohort, Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com. This is the show where we talk to actors, thought leaders, comedians, musicians, even drummers, a lot of drummers on a good day. We drew a lot of both sides of our mouth. And Jim, I know you're, we, uh, this is a good friend of both of ours. And this is a celebrated Emmy nominated TV anchor and media personality. She did four years at WSMV. And I have a story about that. 13 years at Fox 17. She is a journey woman in this media personality land. Our friend Kelly Sutton, how are you doing? Wow. Can I just have you go everywhere and announce me? That was amazing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Kelly. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> this Kelly is WWE. Sutton. It was incredible. Right. Well, thank I, you. I am just so happy to be here. Thank you. You, you got to think on your feet. And I, I know that you are, you have like a, doctorate in thinking on your feet as a host and you just been so active in this whole thing forever my my claim to fame and i got to tell you i finally um on this cool hosting game you'll be proud of me i'm i'm gonna have an agent in los angeles and i had to get my reel right and it was like so many versions of my reel for my teacher and and an agent and yeah. on that reel is you and I cutting up on WSMV today in Nashville. I owe you for asking me to do the, to, to be a guest co-host. That was so fun. Oh my gosh. I made the reel. Ah, you are in the reel. I'll have to send it to you. And then, and then of course I came on again and with you and Carol yeah. and, and we did drum lessons and you guys were just dancing around sweating with tambourines and it was so fun. Oh my God. And that was just a Monday. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, you know what? You are such a great sport. And thank you so much for coming in and doing it. Yeah. You know, this has been, it has been quite the journey. I love the way that you phrase it. That's a beautiful way to put it. And I have loved every second of the journey. It has been so, so, so much fun. I've been in Nashville for 20 years. So yeah, since me too. Almost 25. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been here for a minute. We watched it change and it's still just an amazing little town with a great big heart. You know, now it's, now it's everybody's town. It's so fun to watch all these people move here. And I'm like, man, if you only knew what Broadway used to look like. And if you only knew that there were never any hotels around yeah. here. It was, yeah. it was dicey down there. And like when I moved here, of course, it was like, you know, me and my buddy, Jim Riley, the 20 year drummer from Rascal Flats. We moved here on like a Tuesday and on Saturday we're down there like, you know, with our master's degree and all of our experience, like playing for tips in a pickle jar going, what the heck are we doing? <laughs> and just watching the town grow up, you know, we had, the, it was kind of dicey down there and we had the Renaissance hotel. That was about it. And free parking everywhere. Like I would like park up at the church at the top of Broadway there and just kind of like, it was free parking. And I would just schlep my cymbals and my snare drum down to lower Broadway. These yeah. are the things we do, you know? Yeah. Um, my picture was, enshrined at the stage for quite some time. I don't know if it's still there or not, but uh, about 2004, I shot a pilot for a show. I wanted to launch my own show and it was going to be called Live from the Stage. And I shot it with Craig Morgan. So Craig wow. came down and, and his whole band and uh, we had the lights and the cameras and the whistles and the bells and all the things. Um, <laughs> didn't take off, but it was super fun. And they took a lot of pictures and that was still on the front of the stage, as you walked by on Broadway, you know, they have like a bunch of pictures, super faded and whatever. There's a picture of me from 2004 in all its glory right there. It's like, yes, I made it. I'm on Broadway kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It just, I was talking to a bunch of Broadway drummers today. This Broadway drummer reached out to me. He had played on Frozen and we were talking about how much we love Hamilton and Dear Evan Hansen. We're going to have like a Broadway drummer round table. Those poor guys, everyone's just out of work right now. Not to paint a dark picture, but you know, the, overnight the creative arts have been totally just 
upended, you know, mm-hmm. and we're all kind of like reinventing ourselves, hopefully with a smile on our face, you know. Um, so how did it all start for you? Did you like get a degree in media or communications or what, what was that all about? How did the, what was the spark? You know, what's really funny. I, I, I don't know. And, and you guys chime in. I would love to hear when you knew, when you knew that this was what you were going to do. But for me, I was really blessed that about 15 or 16, when I was in high school, we did a field trip to a television station. And I grew up in Southern Indiana, a tiny little town called Hanover, 3,500 people, one stoplight. And we went to Louisville, Kentucky, um, to all of the television stations. We like took a whole day and we visited all three of them. And I distinctly remember walking in to one of the TV stations and standing in the newsroom. And it was, it was a lightning bolt moment. It hit me and I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is it. Yeah. I just knew immediately. Um, I took a picture on the set. I Gosh, I wish I knew where that picture was. It would be great. But <laughs> I took a picture on the set, uh, went home that day and told my parents, I'm going to be a you know TV journalist. That's my calling. Yeah. I just feel it. And immediately they said, okay, cool. Where do you want to go to school that does that? And that's how I figured out where I was going to go to college. That's, I mean, like from that moment, from making that decision, everything else swung around that pivotal decision. So yeah, I went to college. I went to Franklin College in Indiana. It's a small school, but it's uh, very, very well known for journalism, especially broadcasting. So did that. Started working at a television station when I was in college. I worked in Indianapolis for a while. I worked with an investigative journalist uh, when I was in Indy and did like an undercover story. Yeah, like all kinds of crazy um, when I was there. And then finally just kept working my way up the ranks, but always wanted to be in television news, some aspect of that. It's it's really interesting. I mean, well, you're so great at what you do, and you're so polished. And you know, the the girlfriend and I were, and we're watching a little bit of news this morning, and we're like, "How did that guy get the job with all the um er, uh?" In, in other words, I um, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, and then the next guy is like, just like polished doesn't step on one word is just like free flowing in the moment it's very impressive to be able to think on your feet like that did you like the hard hitting like investigative journalism or did you do you like like you know you talk to country music stars you have you've interviewed dolly parton garth lady a blake miranda carrie you know and you you're on a first name basis with these people nashville's a small town something tells me you like that better i did oh i did <laughs> Man, I mean, you know, it's the difference of like, you're doing something every day and, and you think that that's what you really love, right? And you're like, man, I really, I really like ham sandwiches. Ham sandwiches are where it's at. But then somebody brings you like a Monte Cristo or oh, something yeah. that's like next level. And then you go, what's that? Oh. Where did that come from? And right. that's basically really what happened. Like I, I'd been in news my whole life. I had done, um, I was an evening anchor. I was a morning anchor. I came to Nashville to start a new show in 2001 and it was called uh, Tennessee Mornings. And it was with Ralph Emery nice. of all people. A lot of people might recognize that name. Ralph is just a, a renowned figure in country yeah. music. He, you know, broadcasting, was, uh, broadcasting legend. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Broadcasting legend, Hall of Famer. Everybody knows him, loves him. Um, So they wanted to revamp and start the morning show. He used to do a a local morning show here years and years ago when there were three channels and you had to get up to change the TV. So they wanted to kind of revamp that in a way. And I was a part of that reboot. And it lasted for a couple months. And then Ralph realized why he didn't like getting up at four o'clock in the morning. So he left. (laughs) Uh, Charlie Chase stepped in and was my co-host for eight years. And it was a, it was a hybrid of news and entertainment in the morning. But the one thing that we were really great at is we would carve out space for local artists to come in and perform. And so we had like these up and coming acts that were coming in and performing on the show. Yeah like Taylor Swift and John Mayer and, you know, never heard of Brian, Brian and Tyler from Florida Georgia Line yeah, and yeah. a little guy named Jason Aldean. Like That's the right. first time first time he ever played and first time he ever said butt crack on television was on my show. Yeah. So <laughs> And I still remember that. It was so funny. He goes, you didn't realize that's the first time I've ever sang the song with butt crack in it on TV. And Leave I was it to like, John Rich. 
There you go. I was like, there it is. So we, you know, I grew up with everybody. I mean, it was kind of like they were getting their start. I was getting my start in the country music world and it all just gelled. And then it, it, that kind of became like my beat, if you will. I would go to number one parties. I would go to record release parties. I was, you know, at industry events. I started going to CRS. I started just really diving into it and finding out how much I loved it. And um, the one thing about news it changes who you are. The longer you do it, the the more it changes you. Even if you don't think it does, I think it does. Well, what do you, you mean? Know? What do you? What is that like? So, yeah. I felt like I was I was really jaded for a long time. You From know? the negativity of the news, because ninety percent of it is negative, because negativity sells, or what? What do you think? Sex sells, and if it bleeds, it leads. If there it you bleeds, go. Yeah, well, Jim. And, yeah, Jim's a more was a morning radio yeah. guy, so. You know, you know, um, you, you see and report and talk about and focus on the worst parts of humanity all day, mm-hmm. all day. That's Rah-rah. your job. That's your job. Yeah. So you become so, um, accustomed to doom and gloom that it doesn't hit you the same way it hits other people. For example, you desensitized completely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there, there's a fire. Oh, well, did anybody die? No. Okay. Well, we're not going to no. cover it. <laughs> Truly. That, Ouch. That's yeah. the conversation. Yeah. And but, um, let me ask you one thing. Okay. okay. And, and this is something that uh, a couple of uh, morning guys did at one point, and they made fun of their local news channels to the point where people around the country started collecting these things and sending them in. It was the most hilarious morning show bit I've ever heard. Okay. And it was, the, and it was the, uh, Scary news teases. Okay. Oh, we all heard them. You know, tonight, tonight at 11, something on your stove could very well kill you and your entire family. <laughs> Find out what that is tonight. And meanwhile, you're left going, what? Yeah. 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 How could it be? <laughs> something under your sink could might as well kill your entire family and extended lineage going up into your ancestry. Find out what that is tonight at 11. Ouch. You're, yeah. You better what? believe you're tuning in. You're hired. What? You're hired. I would listen to any broadcast that Jim was doing the voice. Jim's over. really good with what? the monster truck read. He what really is. What do you is. mean? What's, what's under my sink that could kill me? Tell me now. You got to find out at 11. You know, ours was always the recalls. <clears throat> like, uh, you know, there's been a major recall on romaine lettuce. We'll give you all those barcodes coming up. We're not, gonna, we're not going to tell you where. <laughs> in the meantime, you're looking in your fridge like, uh, uh, should I toss that? Should I? I just ate that for lunch what yeah so yeah i mean and and it does it it didn't i don't think it hit me how much it had affected me or how much it had changed me until i had a child and then i remember coming back from maternity leave and i had to do a story on child rape Mm. and that i think that was the moment where i was like no I can't do this. Yeah, I can't no. do this anymore. It, yeah. it, it just, it, it hits you differently. So I, needless to say, I was like, Hey, you know, what's really fun talking to musicians. I like that. Those people are funny and they're fun and they're creative. And I've always said this and I stick to this. I feel like I am a frustrated musician that doesn't necessarily have an instrument. Like I play the flute, but nobody really needs a flute player in music city. I mean, you know, if Lizzo's doing like a reboot or something, somebody hit me up. But (laughs) other than that, there's just not a whole lot of need for flute or piccolo player. So I love music and I know how it makes me feel when I hear it and when I'm around it. And when I'm not around it, something feels like it's off, like it's missing. And that's when I realized, okay, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Like, this is what you got ready for. And this got you ready for it. But now that is what you're supposed to be doing. And that's what you're supposed to be focusing on. You've got a big megaphone so that you can shout to the world. You got to listen to this music. You got to see what these people are doing and what they're creating because it's amazing. So that's kind of what I feel like my role is. It's not to make the music. It's to make people listen to the music and let them hear it. Yeah, because I... I was trying to think when the heck I met you because it just you're just a staple of the Nashville community. And now that I've been here 25 years, people are like, yeah, if you need a drummer, I hopefully my name's on the list. But I almost feel like we met through, did you used to come out and see like Kurt Allison's dad's band in the nightclub? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, you know who it was? It was Amber Dotson. 
Oh remember, my! Remember? Your friends, you were good friends with Amber her. Amber was like, one of my best friends, and yeah. she was my neighbor. So when you, when Amber was out on tour, you guys were playing with Amber, right? Opening were, for George Strait. We were doing we the George Strait tour. Yeah, four songs. Yes, yes. And so Amber was my neighbor and one of my best friends. And so we came like two or three tour stops yeah. on the George tour and hung out with you guys on the bus. <laughs> Not that I, we remember any of that. I had massively ripped jeans, a massive w wallet chain. All of us did. And yeah. my hair was slightly purple. So I remember on the first day of tour, it was like, get to know the people of the tour. There was like this little mixer. And I remember King George walking by and looking at me and doing a double take like what the hell you know but we had a tight little band because we opened up we, it yeah. was like you know me Kurt and Tully it was basically Al Dean's band yeah. um, before we started touring full time God this would have been 2004 2005 yep. Yep. and uh, Dirks Bentley was in the, the middle, middle act yes. and yeah. that was good he had his crazy shaggy curly yeah. hair I can't believe that was like 16, 17, 15 years ago, 16 yeah, 15. years ago. Crazy. Well, and this is really fun too. You'll love this. So um, I took my dad, who's a, a country mus music lover and plays, he plays guitar and, and has his whole life. And um, I took him to the Indianapolis stop of that tour. So it was my dad, my mom and, and us, and we went, you know, to see Amber and whatever. And I still distinctly remember my dad saying, well, Amber sounded great. And George was just amazing. But that guy in the middle, he ain't country. <laughs> it was Dirks. <laughs> I was like, was okay, Dirks? well noted. Thanks, yeah. Dad. Thanks, yeah. Dad. That guy in the middle. <laughs> like, and now he's a, a staple of, of our sound and our industry. Right, right, right. A lot of leaving left to do, I thought was very country. You know? it, it just blessed. Was it the first? That was his debut single. That got well, all the yeah, right. but maybe maybe it was just you know the, just the the presentational, the volume yeah. or whatever. You know, he was rock. Right, yeah. right. He's rock. Now the, sure. the rumor about him is he used to hang around. He hung around the Opry a lot. He and was there. really in 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 bed with Diddy. Yeah, he worked there. So he he, he, kinda, uh, he was a hustler though. Let me tell you, that kid. He did all kinds of things. He worked in the tape room for a while. Oh, it's he Sony. Worked, he worked at Sony. He worked in the Opry. Um, I forgot what he was doing at the Opry, but he told me this whole story. Like he just, he would be backstage and just absorb all of it. Like nice. he just wanted to be around it, yeah. you know? And I will also go on record as saying there are very few people in the industry that I think have a photographic memory, but I think Dirks might be one of them. As far as like names, places, faces? All of yeah. it. Yeah. He, he doesn't Which we got to get him on. Yeah, he just Good doesn't forget. He's one of them. Garth is one of them. Um, there might be a few others, but I, I can, I can just say Dirks is one of the smartest people I've ever talked to. It seems like yeah, he's very savvy, sure. and he yeah. knew how to work the system, and he had a determination that was just unbreakable. Yeah. It seems. He's yeah, and in the early days, we uh, with him and Miranda, we did a bunch of like flip-flop co-headlining in the early days. So this was like, you know, 2006, yeah. 2007, 2008, whenever all three of those acts were building their brands, it was so exciting. It was like 12 guys on a bus eating nuts and bubble gum and protein bars and just building this thing. It was like such an exciting, now looking back at it, I, I didn't know that it was just like one of the best periods of my life because yeah. you're in the throes of building something epic. And then another song comes out. And, another, and in the early days, you're like, we're one song away from just like not doing this. You know what I mean? It's like, there's no leniency in the music business. If you put out a stinker of a single, yeah, you know, but uh, yeah. it all worked out and we all bought houses and Japanese cars and we're in, incredible. I mean, it's so it's exciting. Good. Yeah. It's all good, brother. It's all good. It's and so now you got your podcast. This is amazing. Well, it's really fun. You know, everyone's everyone's got a podcast. There's a million of yeah. them out there. And how do you figure out how can you cut through the 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 noise out there? And so Jim and I are just trying to be um, funny and entertaining and have someone at the end of the hour walk away going, I learned something. That's amazing. And we most yeah. of the time fail, so <laughs> Stop, Jim. So, okay, so you, you get to Nashville, you get that first job, and then was the next job Fox 17? That was a, while, a long time there, 13 years. Yeah, no, the first job was Fox. That was the very okay. first one out of okay. the gate. Um, when they did the Ralph Emery show, it was at Fox. Nice. Um, and I was there, and, you know, 
uh, man, it was incredible. It was everything that I needed to learn. I needed to learn how to, I mean, Nashville is its its own little beast, you know, Music Row has its own language and you really need to learn how to navigate that. It It is very difficult for anyone that's not from here or that hasn't been here for a while to understand how Nashville works. Um, Thank goodness I had somebody like Charlie Chase that could hold my hand and show me and and introduce me around, like take me places and go, yeah. hey, this is Kelly. And, you know, really figure out who the power players are. I mean, when I came to town, I didn't know what a publicist was. I didn't know what a manager was. I didn't know what labels were. I didn't know how any of this worked. That wasn't my world. So there's a whole different like landscape that you have to learn and how to navigate this town. Yeah. And, and thankfully I had a really great teacher, but yeah, I, I worked at Fox. Um, that went away. They just made a big change. Um, and I would be lying if I didn't say that was like the heartbreak that really, really messed me up for a little bit. Cause mm-hmm. that was what I came to town to do and built for 12, 13 years, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I just picked myself up and said, you know what? I'm going to start my own business. It's going to be fine. I started my own publishing or not publishing, but my own production company, I guess publishing in a way, but different. So I started my own production company and um, just kind of went out and started like doing it for other people. I was doing segments for Zeus TV. I started reporting for Williams and Source. I started writing for One Country. And it was like, I just, I really wanted to become like a Ryan Seacrest model of, of what it looked like. Not working for, right, not not working for one, but working for all and um, having content live on all these different channels. So that really started in about 2016, 2015, 2014, I guess. And then 2016, I got hired at um, the NBC affiliate. And I was doing the show there. And then that all changed in September of yeah. 2020. Thank you, 2020. 2020. <laughs> like, what the what? Uh, yeah, so it all kind of went away. But I think having lived through this already once, it wasn't as scary the second time around. And, you know, with this, with what happened with Today in Nashville, which is still the most fun I've ever had on television. Absolutely. It is, it is still and will always be like the highlight of what I've done in TV. But in looking at it now, I'm like, you know, having had that opportunity to be on a show that was an hour long, it was built around live music. That was the pillar of that show. When they came to me and they said, we're going to do this show. Do you want to be a part of it? It's, It's all about live music. I was like, yes, 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 yes. Sign me up. So having had that, it was incredible. And it just kind of set me up for what I'm doing now. So I launched my own show called Connected with Kelly. And, and that's, here we are. I love it. So tell us about that. I, I, I'm, I'm a subscriber on Thank YouTube. You. Thank and then, you. And then are you trickling out on all of the other, like some of the audio on all the other podcasts? Like, so your Stitchers and your Google Plays and your Spotify's and all that. You got to be on all those, right? All the things, brother. All the things. I, I, I feel like, well, I'll subscribe on Apple Podcasts. I find that that is just the the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Like, every, that's the popular one because it just comes yeah. with your iPhone, you know? And I just keep discovering new podcasts. I mean, I went out for my run today and I might, I might do the Brene Brown podcast and learn about, you know, how to be more empathetic and learn about shame. And, and then I listen to a little Joel Olstein's 28 minutes. I'm a better person at the end of that. I might listen to a drum cat podcast or like a what to do with your money and your midlife podcast. It's just great. It's an amazing thing that they call this thing they call new media. Yeah, I, man. It's awesome. It. Yeah. So I, who, are, who are you having on your show? Is it, is is it music centric? So when, when I started, um, it was just one of those things like, okay, this is what I love. This is what I've, I've done. This is what I want to continue to do. I'm just going to do it for myself. I mean, here's the crazy thing, Rich, and you will love this because, and Jim, you live in this world already because you own all the equipment. But I, because I had my own production company, I had all of these lights and I had cameras and I had microphones and I had all of this stuff, right? So when we went into COVID lockdown in March, they wouldn't let us back in the TV station. And I just looked at my husband, Paul, which God bless that man. I mean, How long have you guys been married? 21 years. Look at you. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know. He hasn't left me yet. But anyway, <laughs> we, um, I looked at him and I was like, I think we're going to have to figure out how to do this from home. 
Yeah. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, I just don't, I just have this feeling we're not going to go back in the station. Let's figure it out. So we built this, we built a studio in my basement. Uh, I have a bunch of different backdrops and, you know, all the things and all the lights. And, and then I called everybody at the station. And I said, hey, I think I have a workaround how we can do this show. So for six months, we produced Today in Nashville out of my basement just because I didn't want it to go away and I, and I didn't know what else we were going to be able to do. And so we figured it out. Um, it, in, in doing all of that and in, in trying to hustle that, it turns out I gave myself the gift of, I have a television studio in my basement. Yes. Yeah. I have, I have a working studio. I can do whatever I want. So in September, um, Meredith did massive layoffs across the board. It was 200 people across the U S ah. so it wasn't personal. Like that was the one thing it was like, they didn't just go, uh, you, you're out of here. It was oh, yeah. uh, yes, totally uh, surprised. I was surprised. I was really? very surprised. Yeah. Really? I did. I, Cause I had no idea that that was happening. See, I got out of radio in 2013 and I'm not surprised at all with what's happened right. since. You know, yeah. I mean, a, not to, yeah, not to go yeah. into like some real insider baseball stuff, but from what I was told, it was on the upswing. Like we, we were good. We, we had done a lot of things during that summer and a lot of people had been moved around and whatever. And so like, it was, Yay. You know, we're doing yeah. good. We're doing good. And then <laughs> boom. Yeah. We were doing good until we weren't. So with that, I mean, I was, I was nervous. I was scared. I was sad. I was all the things, but truly underneath all of that, I was just like filled with hope because I kind of went, oh, I see what you did, God. I see mm -hmm. what you did. Yeah. You, you laid all of this out so that I would be okay when this happened. Yeah, you've and already got all the gear. It's great. It's here. It's all mine. And it's here. And I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. So I just, it, it was kind of that light bulb moment. Like, you're fine. All of this is, there's, there's nothing stopping you anymore. The barrier of entry used to be that distribution channel. But with mm -hmm. YouTube and Stitcher and Apple Podcasts and all the other things, that barrier has gone. The barrier of entry is, you know, a microphone. If you've got this, you're fine. You can do this. Hell. You've got yeah. this. Right, you right. Phone. Yes. Just do it right. with your phone. Yeah, it's That's crazy. Exactly right. So um, because of that, I was like, you know what? We're going to do it. And I kind of, I mean, to, you know, go into the, the spiritual speak of like speaking into existence, I put it out there and my first guest was Carrie Underwood. So yeah, it was that. like, let's manifest some stuff. Let's just manifest that. We're going to talk it into existence, honey. Say yeah. it till you see it. Say it till you see it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I put it out there and it was, you know, Carrie comes in and Kane Brown comes in and, you know, I've got some stuff that I was like, oh wait, I've got nine years worth of video that I shot that's sitting right here that I can go through and go, hey, no one ever saw this. Let's pull that up and see if that's still good. And yeah, so it's been really great. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Those who are self-employed, especially musicians, think homeownership is unattainable. For Bruce Klein, it took seven years to purchase his first home as a self-employed working musician. But once he did, man, was it satisfying. So he decided he wanted to help other musicians and creatives gain that same satisfaction. Bruce earned his lending license and is now helping people avoid the mistakes he made on his seven-year journey. If you're a self-employed musician, he can help. Go to musiciansmortgage.com, powered by Movement Mortgage. Bruce Klein, NMLS, number 1465948. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS, number 39179. NMLS, consumeraccess.org. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. 
This is the Rich Redman Show. Me personally, like, you know, I remember starting a, a YouTube channel when I was like, what is this YouTube thing? And I was watching yeah. drummers doing videos and I was like, this kid has got a million views and he's just playing a th- cover song in his parents' basement. And then I said, how powerful of a tool would that be f- for someone like myself who's playing in front of 80,000 people if I put a GoPro behind me and let pe- people experience that firsthand, that visceralness of the of hearing the crowd and experience that thing with me. And it's uh, a look Looking back now, and I'm like, wow, I've got almost 600 videos on my YouTube channel. It's oh crazy. My gosh. And we're coming up on 100 episodes of, of this thing. Jim and I got a usually film in my studio that's got all the nice Persian rugs, and I have a sign behind me. You have Mevos and great lighting and multiple. And then I was like, okay. Then I spent COVID in LA. And so the girlfriend had this nice backdrop. I got the lights, I got the lapel mic, boom, into Zoom. I could record there. And now I'm at my condo and I'm surrounded by lights, and I got the overpriced art behind me. And we're in business. We're doing it. Like, it's incredible. I mean, that's it. Hold on one second. This just died. I want to start. Overpriced art. Do you mean like at least $20 behind you? At least. At least. (laughs) At least. (laughs) Like, let me show you my overpriced art. Yeah. Okay. I'm really hoping that that was recording. I want to say, Rich, that we probably have more episodes via Zoom than we do in the studio. At the I know point. I missed the in, the in studio thing, but hopefully everybody will get the shot in the arm and people will wear masks and the world will turn around. But I think it's going to be another 365 days. Unfortunately, what, what, what? You really do. You I mean, I don't know. I mean, if, if we got 300 million people to get a shot in the arm and we've only done it for eight, we're behind. We're behind it's- schedule. It's, it's 300 a, million people aren't going to get a shot. That's true. That's true. But maybe 150 will. I don't know. I, it's so interesting because when, it, when they were talking about the vaccine at the beginning, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I just, I let everybody else go first. Y'all go first. I'll be over here. I just wait and make sure you don't grow like an extra arm or anything. Yes. But now as it has gone on, I'm just like, if you would come to my door, I would stand there with my arm roll, like ready, like just give it to me now. I'm ready. Let's go. Um, Thank goodness. My mom has already gotten hers, which is amazing because she's a healthcare worker. So that was huge. If I can just get my dad vaccinated, then I'd feel a lot better about the world. I mean, that's the thing. I, you know, uh, chances are if any of us got it, we'd be okay. But the older population, it just, it, that weighs heavy. That's, that's a heavy one. It does. I'm so happy my parents are okay. And they're in Florida and it's just like the wild west there, you know? Oh yeah, I know. I've been, we went in December. Um, we, we made a trip and I was like, Ooh, people down here are acting like there is nothing going on. It's really interesting. And <laughs> in, in places where the sun is shining, it's just like, it's like another planet. It's like a, a whole other thing. It's like it's cool. it's vitamin D. It's, I know. It's and Jim's got me D. taking my zinc five times a day. I love it, Jim. Thank you. And this is the zinc crazy lessons. part. I am now taking Centrum Silver. I don't. How did that happen, Kelly? You just match your hair. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! What do you think? Should I? Do you like this? I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go. I with love it. it. Good. Yeah. The, the 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 salt and pepper look does look good on him. Well, I remember I when Al Dean too, and so. his manager saw it for the first time, and they kind of did a double take, like. Uh, are you between hair appointments? Or are you going to get that guy? Because we can't have an old drummer. Um, but, you know, if you, it, what I like is going up there with the silver hair and then playing like I'm 16 years old and then it levels the playing field, you know? No. You know what? It's distinguished, but it's not old. It's just yeah. cool. No. It Thanks. doesn't look old at all. Yeah. Uh, look at Anderson cool. Cooper for crying out loud. Uh, the silver fox. Everybody the loves Anderson. Fox. People love the silver fox <laughs> and bald guys. <laughs> Bald dad bod fat guys. <laughs> Stop. Right. Man, it's good. It's all good. Stop. So what tell you is the I, was landscape? I just have questions for you now because what does the landscape look like for you guys? I mean, this is really the question, you know. Well, I've got some uh, things on my wall. Right. Gray. That's I great. I like all of this. I like where this right. is going. But truly, Cameras. it's it's interesting to me for people that are touring, like touring musicians. This is not happening. Tours are not happening. I mean, I've done four or five interviews recently with people who are saying we are we are booking dates with the hopes that yes. we might possibly get to play a show by July. August. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying I mean, July, or- July is kind of like the dream, you know, scenario. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so I mean there's I mean, all of our guys in our band, I mean, finishing each other's sentences and 
breathing in diesel fuel and sweating blood together for two decades, you know, to, to have that suitcase packed for 20 years and then all of a sudden not do it. It was the strangest year. I mean, and everybody kept really, you know, busy. You can't make great wine out of, of grapes that are rotting on the vine. You know, you got to yeah. stay relevant and evolve and grow and change. And, you know, the guys write songs and produce records and, you know, you record songs for other people. I'm a college professor. I teach at the Musicians Institute in Hollywood and I do it right here from my computer. Um, but, the, but we're missing it. We're jonesing. We want to get back out there and get the sweat on each other. So hopefully in a perfect world, there will be some things happening after July. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I hope you're right. I yeah. miss it. I, I mean, know. you know, just as a fan and a journalist and a person that covers all of these things, yeah. it's sad. It is, it's so disappointing when you look and you're like, oh, country radio seminar is virtual this year. And I mean, are we going to have a CMA fest? I'm going to say probably not, but yeah. Did they cancel uh, Mardi Gras? Yes, they canceled okay. Mardi Gras. That would be a super spreader. God. <laughs> For sure. And even even if there wasn't COVID, there would be something else being spread down there. Oh, you know. Always. Uh, always. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Carlinistic way of looking at things. Just swim in the Hudson River. All right. And be get exposed to everything and your immunity builds up. Swallow some spread of it. Spread it around. You're you good. know, if we got to spread, it's a virus. You're not going to prevent catching it. Just just spread it around. Get it over with. Let's get Oh, this. my gosh. Yeah, Holy I know. Holy cow. I know, Jim. I need that. Yeah, I, you know. I need a I I'd need a minute. I don't think I can handle that. There's no way. <laughs> There's no getting around it. You know, give everyone's you know, you're gonna get it. If you're bound to get it, you're gonna get it. Just you know. <laughs> so Jim, then. now Kelly, Jim has a part of the show because it's the random question of the day. We even have a jingle. Oh. But I'm gonna okay. hit you with I'm gonna hit you with five fast questions while he's looking okay. for the random question of the day. Favorite <laughs> food. Favorite food lasagna. Favorite song. Oh gosh, uh, that's hard, right? Sitting on the dock of the bay, Otis Redding. Oh my god, classic! Favorite color, red. Okay, mine's black and red. Favorite movie, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh yeah, okay, Bueller. Um, and favorite celebrity crush that could potentially be a hall pass. Uh, Have you discussed this with your husband, or is he going to learn about this on the show? You can't. That's uh, not a pass. That's you uh, can't tap this one up. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to say, um, Bradley Cooper. Oh, everyone's going to say Bradley Cooper. I mean, guys are going to say Bradley Cooper. The guy's gorgeous. Back, Come on. Yeah. yeah. But here's the thing. I interviewed him. He's the new so, Brad Pitt. He are you making Pitt. your voice lower? <laughs> <laughs> He, um, he came to town when he did a star is born and I got to do an interview with him. And I think Paul was kind of like, <laughs> Wait. So, uh, so, oh, so, oh, oh, did, did Paul go with you? Like, and you know, like, was he, he marking his territory, like no. holding your hand extra tight and stuff? Okay. He did not. He did not. Uh, but he did, like, when I came home, he goes, How's Bradley? And I was like, He's, He's kind of great. He's <laughs> kind of great. <laughs> now, what does really Paul do? Good. What does Paul do? Paul runs camera for me. But no, he has, he has a, a job, job. He does. He runs camera. Like, honest What's to God, y'all. What? What's his day job? His day job, um, he works for a packaging company, not mm -hmm. packaging like liquor sales, but like packaging, um, paper, twine, all of those things. Big, huge machines. Wow. Like right. he, he sells all kinds of amazing bubble products. wrap. Well, like the Larry David bubble, rap. bubble wrap. Yeah. <laughs> it so, sounds like Rich that uh, he works in a large facility that could use some uh, new LED lights from Big that's, Dot Lighting. That's, that's Jim's the, hot uh, side hustle. Everybody's really? going LED. But Jim, I got to yeah. tell you, I, I put yeah. some LED lights in my kitchen and, and it's like I can cook eggs under these things. It's not Are pleasant. They, they get hot. They're so damn bright. And I'm like, really? oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they're too so strong. You, have, you, have, you probably have the wrong color temperature. That's all. Yeah. He does. You got to go for the right Kelvin. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you gotta be, you gotta be nice. smart. You gotta be wise on all of 3, that. 3,200 K, you know, I'll, yep. I'll, we, we just had lights put in our bedroom, uh, can lights, the ones that just kind of clip into the ceiling and they were five or four K and it was like, you could do surgery in there. You know? Oh my gosh. It was that kind of time. Yeah. It was that bright. I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to work. Yeah. This is not going to get her in the mood. No. You know? And I will tell you, um, my husband did the exact same thing with some of our lights. I don't know what they were that he changed them out to, but I walked in because I don't, I was like, whatever. I walked in and I was like, this looks like the, this looks like the grocery store and I can't. Was the I objective, 
for us to see this from uh, space. Is that what we were trying <laughs> for? What we were doing? Yeah. He's like, well, these will never burn out. And I said, mm, eh. but you're going to take them out and you're going to replace them because they're ugly. They so. could burn out. $50,000. If, if they make your house look bad, it's not worth it. But if yeah. they are beautiful, and I know they do have different temperatures now, right? They have yes. different colors. You can get the soft oh. white. We have a line called Octave Lighting, which just came up in back of me here. Let me tell you a little bit about it. We'll turn this into an infomercial now. I love Octave it. Octave Lighting is amazing for car washes and buildings, and it's a multicolor LED solution that you should really look into. Octave Lighting. Oh, my God. So, Jim, Did you, like you <laughs> maybe you and I could be a team package on HSN or QVC. So, Kelly, you know, I've been studying acting for the last six years and the hosting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And my teacher says – um, you should, you should do the audition for HSN and QVC because she says you could sell ice to an Eskimo, which I don't even know is very PC to say that anymore. Um, but I just said it. Wah, wah. Um, and, but anyways, I think the audition is you have to talk about a product for like 10 minutes without fail and be charismatic and knowledgeable. You and have charming. to sell. If you had to sell yourself to somebody and they said, yeah. okay, sell me you or sell this glass of water. What would you choose? Oh, uh, the glass of water. Would you? You wouldn't sell yourself? Okay, no. go ahead. Sell me a glass of water. Well, you know, it depends exactly what you need, but we have multiple sizes for you. You can go large, extra large. Myself, I really do like the extra large model because I don't like to refill. This is amazing because not only will it hold some of the purest water that comes from the Himalaya mountains, but if you would like sparkling water, we have that option for you as well. And let me tell you this, you can add a little drop of lemon and it just boosts the flavor like you would not believe. These are indestructible. You can put them in the dishwasher. They're going to last you for years and years. You can use them over and over again. You can even put a label on them if you'd like, and you can send them to all your friends and family. It is one-stop shopping for you right now. You can put it on stretch pay if you would like. We've got that multiple option for you. So make sure that you log on right now and order at least two sets of these because you'll thank me later. That's a 40-second pitch right there. Oh, my God. I'm buying it. You know what? It's almost like you, you could talk about feed water. It's like only the finest water coming from Fiji, Tennessee from a garden hose. Right, Fiji. right. That's exactly okay. right. Here's the other thing, because, you know, getting into selling things and, you know, doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, you guys have seen Wolf of Wall Street, right? Sure. I Been have not seen the, the entire thing, but yes, I've seen clips. Sell me this pen. <laughs> yeah. Who, me? He does. He goes up. Oh, and, yeah, you that's know, right. Uh, yeah. Gordon Belfort at the end of the movie, because he starts a speaking career, he goes, sell me this pen. And they yeah. all start taking the pen. They're like, well, it's a nice pen. It's very comfortable. And he just takes it out of their hand. He goes to the next guy and goes, sell me this pen. <laughs> right. And he's basically trying to get somebody to say, look, okay, here's a blank check. Okay, great. You want to put something down on it? It's a blank check. I'm going to sign it. Great. You have a pen? Yep. There you go. Oh. The problem. You're going to always need a pen. Yeah. Because pencils can be erased. Jim, See, random you question. Did make me thirsty. You, you, you created a problem. Uh, <laughs> then I'm doing my job. Random question. I love this. Okay. It's the random question, random question, random question of the day. So we have, <laughs> we have five random questions and a okay. topper of a oh. random question that you, okay. you can tap out if need be. Okay, Kelly, here we go. <clears throat> Ready? We need some sort of like a tension bed or something to come underneath this. Okay, well, let's get, we'll get it going on. Here, here we go. Can you hear that? That does not sound like- That sounds like baby making music, buddy. <laughs> That's a, uh, hi. Now it's time for the random question. Do it, go with okay, it, Jim. Maybe this one will work. Okay. That's even worse. Hi. What kind of music are you doing, doing down there, Jim? What's happening? I don't know. I need a tension bed, so- We'll, yeah, we'll get it, we'll get it. We know a lot of composers. I, I can grab one. Okay. okay. What what from the present will withstand the test of time and do not say COVID? <laughs> what from the present will withstand, withstand the test of time? Of time. Hmm. 
my YouTube channel will withstand the test of time. <laughs> nice. And answer. I would love for all of you to subscribe. That's where you should head right now. Just go look up Kelly Sutton TV on YouTube. You could subscribe right there. Connected with Kelly. Because Tell me these, your YouTube channel. Go. These conversations are going to last and they will be evergreen. In fact, I mean, you know what? 75 years from now, you're going to wonder what was Carrie Underwood doing during quarantine? And my YouTube channel will have the answer for you. For sure. I love you know, that. Connected with Kelly. Put, you, when you put the sexy music bed underneath it, it, it just makes it pop. Changes the whole meaning of that show, man. <laughs> <laughs> Changes the whole meaning. <laughs> Don't think we can Connected use that music. Connected with Kelly. <laughs> Don't think we can use that music. <laughs> oh, my God. Check out OnlyFans.com. Uh, <laughs> Kelly, are you on TikTok? I've, I've resisted it, but my girlfriend, see, I wake up in the morning doing some sort of a dance routine. I thought or, you were going to ask her if she was on OnlyFans. You know, like, like, <laughs> my girlfriend's like, you should get on TikTok and do your ridiculous dances and yeah. sketches and all that. I just haven't done yeah. it. I haven't done it. Um, I am on there. I have not done one video yet, and I, I should. Um, I love to dance. I was actually a, a cheerleader and dancer for years and years and years and, nice. and taught taught classes and, and things like that. So I would love it. Um, I have an 11 year old and I don't know if you speak 11 year old ease, but that would be the ultimate embarrassment. So it's almost like I'm holding out until she does something really awful so that I can really embarrass her. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a lot of TikTok videos up. Um, but you know what? Here's the other thing, Rich. I'm, Here's what I, I would recommend. Heard, it's it's great marketing. It is a great marketing tool. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to get the word out, like that crazy as it sounds, it's kind of a great marketing tool. I got to get on it. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. What do you well, think, Jim? Uh, it's, I, I was actually going to say that with all your episodes, you're pulling, you know, they're, what are they typically, what's the length of each episode? I have original episodes of Connected with Kelly that are anywhere from 15 to 30, sometimes 40 minutes. And then I also have Reconnected, which are older videos that I found in the vault that I'm just popping up like they're timely. You know, I had some stuff with Florida Georgia Line. Some of those are five, six. Create little mini promos, like 30 to 60 seconds long. You've got, you've got the equity. Right. And just put those up there because I've been doing it on, you know, I have my own podcast as well. Yeah. The, uh, what's, what's your problem podcast.com. Nice, yeah. Jim. I think that's what it is. And, uh, and basically uh, I've been putting my promos up there and they get a lot of, it's a, it's a whole new audience to expose to. See, I need to, yeah. I need to. And I just had this Full conversation promos. with another friend too. Um, she said, look, if you're not doing Instagram reels, you're missing out because yeah. with Instagram, and I mean, we can just dive into some social media content right now, but yeah. with Instagram, it's all about whatever their newest thing is. And they are going to put real estate behind that. So if you're doing reels, if you're putting a reel up every day, you're going to have a chance to be on that discover page more than anybody mm -hmm. else because that's what they're pushing, right? That's their new hot yeah. product. And so you need to be doing Instagram reels. So today I jumped on that train and did one um, and I have more planned, but yeah, that's another one that they're super into. And, and I, I love the idea that you can do all of these things with just your phone. It's absolutely free and it's going to get more eyeballs looking at the content that you're making. It doesn't absolutely. have to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's something the like reels, there. are you repurposing uh, snippets from the actual interview or are you just like picking up the phone and like doing just like this kind of stuff like you can no, you can do both you can you know? do both i haven't um i have not repurposed the the videos that i have but i i need to start that i mean truly i think you both understand this it's like what's the bandwidth that i have that i can get all of this stuff done yeah because you know it's amazing to be like i can do anything i want i've got my own show it's amazing yeah. and then you turn around and you're like I've got my own show and that means it's just me, myself and I, and I'm yeah, looking at creating and everything. all the yeah. things. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with that being said, like it's, it's the editing part of it is, is what is taking up the lion's share of the work. And so I'm, I'm working on finding some friends to help that I can farm some of that out to. And I think once that happens, it's going to free up some real estate. But to answer your question, the first reel that I did today was ridiculous and funny. It's me like, uh, sitting in front of the mirror without my hair done. And then I flip my hair and my hair's done. So that's yeah, quality, yeah. quality content right there, honey, quality content. Yes. But you know, what's crazy. The interaction on it 
has been insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Like I flipped my hair and everybody's like, oh, no. and I went, oh, okay. That's great. Yeah. What, yeah. What's your handles? Just Kelly Sutton? The Kelly Sutton. Yeah. The it had, to, Kelly it had to be the Kelly Sutton because there's a race car driver who's named Kelly Sutton. And she unfortunately yes. grabbed all mm. of the handles um, before I did. So, yeah. Well, I'm following you now. So, thank you. And that's on Instagram, the Kelly Sutton? That's yes. The, the, the well, Kelly TikTok. Sutton. And then TikTok. Um, the Kelly Sutton on Instagram. I, I followed uh, you on TikTok. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And if you find an amazing editor that's super affordable, let us know, because that's the main thing that, that, uh, you know, we have to deal with is getting thumbnails created and loading things up. And, and, and we're looking for a new sponsor. We had the school of rock for one year. And of course now we're available for new sponsors. Guys hit us up the rich Redmond show at gmail.com. Kelly, this is amazing. It's about? so it's what, what? You have a sponsor, big dot lighting. That's right. Big dot lighting. Go. You got to go sponsor. led. That's Do right. it. Do it. <laughs> they have colors that can suit any here's the, uh, need. Yeah. Here's the, there the it is. video she was Ooh. talking about. If that's, you're watching that's, the video. that's the video. That's so the video. So straight hair. Yeah. Now watch. Boom. Nice. And wow. Early. Boom. See? I tell you what, like girls love them. their hair. You can't mess with a woman's <laughs> hair. And they will spend anything that they have to to get it colored <laughs> and get it to flip just right. Really, Rich? What, really? Yeah. You're the one saying this? <laughs> Really? <laughs> She's got you there. That's Come true. On. My my hair is always quaffed. It is always quaffed. I was like, you can't. You can't tell me anything about not spending time on your hair. Come on. <laughs> Come See, on. The thing is, is that with TikTok, if you do this on TikTok, you've already got the upper hand. Okay? Yeah. You're a girl. Okay. You're a woman. And that is a tremendous upper hand. I'll take it. Right? Wouldn't you agree? Gets a lot of attention. Well, women but, in. yeah, but Kelly keeps her clothes on. There's a lot of girls that get well, attention. That's, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, but I mean, that's that's a tremendous upper hand. <laughs> so, so you should really pursue it. You got fifteen thousand followers on Instagram. Do this stuff yeah. on on TikTok. It's hey, if I was app. a woman, I would. If I was a beautiful woman, I would never, ever pay for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i would love that that'd be okay. amazing that would be but amazing. how do you do that if you're in a liquor store huh well, it doesn't work that way no, no. i'm talking <laughs> at hey, a bar i'm talking when you on. belly up to the bar <laughs> it's gonna be like hey i see you there in the uh the beer cave so i'm over here i'm uh, next to the bailey's irish cream it's 23 dollars for a big bottle you think jim yeah, i am I'm down with that, that feel do buddy <laughs> so bad i am so down with that feel. So bad. <laughs> oh my god well everybody everyone i don't even know what correct grammar is there everyone check out connected with kelly on youtube and all your platforms you're talking apple podcast spotify stitcher wherever you can find a podcast and i'm so glad i mean you're a quick pivot you're a quick study you're quick on your feet I admire you. I might admire the heck out of you. It was so Thank great to catch you. up with you. Yeah. It's so great to catch up with you guys. And I yeah. just love hanging out with y'all. Let me know whenever you need another person to stop in. I will do it. I love it. And Co-host. That would be fun. That would yeah. be fun. The three of us and another guest. She could totally replace me. Oh, that's, never. That's what you're trying to do. I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> he feels hurt. That's what this is all about. Jim. Hold on, it's fine. Uh, this just makes me want to. All right. Isn't that the greatest scream you've ever heard? I mean, he, I love he, that scream. He really commits to it. Oh my it, gosh, that is just sheer commitment into a and just blasting out the diaphragm of a mic. Love I have it. to say that right there is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> that I don't want to. I don't want to hear that coming at me. That's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, when we used to do this in real time together in the same room, he would always be playing with the buttons of the, uh, you know, so they have all these changes. samples. Just pushing. Just pushing. We, push we really need a press roll roll. I'm a dang drummer. Oh, and we need, really need a press roll. Oh, could you, oh. I think you could probably do that, right? I don't know. Well, there you oh, go. you got it. That's nice, Jim. Yeah. It's nice. Oh, God. Hey. I see you there in the beer cave. You should pour me a drink. You got a beer, the beer pour? 
Jim is it's just he, he is delightful. Do you see why I keep him around? He's, I do. He's got a deep skill set and he's got a childlike energy. Which is really nice. He's just pushing all the buttons right now. Kelly, thank you so much for being here. He'll do this all day. For all the listeners out there, guys, we really appreciate you listening. This, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. We, send us an email, Show at gmail.com. We are looking for a new sponsor. And as always, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Keep coming back for the good stuff. And we will see you next time. Thanks, Kelly. Bye. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredman.com.